Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equinox. In the last episode, we showed the birds of the world a little bit of love. We planted all of these blueberry bushes over in the lush biome so our peacocks would actually have some food to eat. Unfortunately, these beautiful cherry blossom trees don't have a single edible cherry on them, so we had to look toward the different fruit bushes instead. But we also learned that the blueberry bush is great for nesting, so... Oh. Wait a second, a strange sparrow has been born? Are they sharing nests? Wait a second, do we have doves over here too? I'm pretty sure that we do. Are the doves actually sharing a nest with the sparrows? Hang on. One of these eggs is probably going to hatch soon, and then we'll see which one has a different color. It is going to hatch, right? Like this is a shared nest? It's so hard to tell because I've seen a couple of sparrows drop out, but I've also just noticed one of the doves pop out too. I mean, do they usually take this long to hatch? I wonder if maybe I just missed it. I'm so afraid to leave this area though because I know the moment we move on, that's when this little sparrow is going to come into the world. Maybe if we fast forward the time a little bit, let all of these eggs hatch. I mean, the mother sparrows are certainly doing a fine job incubating them, and the doves too, it's kind of like a community effort. Oh, wait a second. Was that one of them? No, I think that must be our normal sparrow. Ooh, but look at this one in the sky. Oh, wait a second, did I actually miss it? Is this the new one? Yes, it has beautiful purple feathers. Oh, you must have snuck off on me. You blend in so well with the normal sparrows, I probably didn't even notice you fall out of that tree. So the magic forest has even seeped into our pirate's territory. But since it's only a hop, skip, and a jump away from it anyways, that's probably no surprise. I would have expected that the purple magic would have wormed its way in here sooner. I wonder if those beautiful primroses beneath this tree has anything to do with it. But yeah, that is pretty interesting. Apparently doves and sparrows can both be born inside this nest. So the different species of birds can actually share nests in a way. That is good to know too. We're actually hoping to place another group of eagles over here. Mother Sparrow is still flying around, desperately searching for her baby. But since they were able to take up residence inside these blueberry bushes, I want to see if maybe we can place them over here too. I've done a little bit of work spreading the forest up between all of these mountains. So now we have a pretty fertile area right next to the spruce trees. Spruce trees are very, very finicky though. That is one thing that I've learned. They need to be in an area without any sort of stones, which means they're not going to like it over here. But they also need to be up in the snow. So we just have to find that area on the cusp where we can still bring some life to the glyphs. We don't really have to worry about bringing the sparrows over here anymore, since we've already finished evolving the eagles. All we have to do is make sure the eagles will actually have some food to eat. That was where we end up going wrong last time. So let's just double check on its diet. I'm pretty sure it's small herbivores. Yep, the eagle is going to hunt small herbivores. So that means things like the guinea pigs. I guess probably things like the rabbits too, right? Yeah, they also count as a small herbivore, but I'm not sure if they're going to enjoy it up here in the mountains. Your yeah, preferred altitude is below 50 meters, so they might not be too happy up here. We'll just stick with the guinea pigs since they seem to be thriving over here by the foxes. Yeah, there they are. I was worried for a moment maybe they had all been hunted away. But they're guarding their one lonely tulip, keeping it safe from those thieving foxes. Actually, that makes sense because I'm pretty sure the guinea pigs enjoy flowers. So we'll have to make sure that we place a couple of the tulips over here too. Unless maybe we spread some bluebells over here. I guess that makes sense. Surely the bluebells would have wormed their way down from the bluebell pack by now. We'll spread some right in between all of these spruce trees, because the bluebells can grow pretty much anywhere as long as there's already snow on the ground to keep them happy. I think I will still spread a couple of tulips down here too, though, in between the ferns and the rosemary, just in case the guinea pigs decide to move a little bit further down the cliffs. We want to make sure that they'll be happy down here too. So that should be plenty. 
Now, let's go ahead and place some of those blueberry bushes down as well. That way the eagles can use them too. It's still not the best environment. I guess right over here we'll have to do. And hopefully we can get a few of them to spread a tiny bit closer to those spruce trees. We'll place a few down here. A few more leading over to the other mountains, I guess. And that should be plenty. So let's see if we can start growing a little colony of guinea pigs in the meantime. Yeah, they seem pretty happy here too. As close to the snow as we can get them. We'll plop you right down there. And you are going to be the brave, brave start lightning the guinea pig of our guinea pig army in the snow. So while we're waiting for everything to take root over here, let's turn our attentions back to the swamplands. Honestly, we haven't spent enough time back here with our warthogs, and they've made that very, very clear. One of them grew a brand new mutation in the last episode, which is this gorgeous golden fur. So I guess they are truly our royal warthogs now, and we have to make sure that their kingdom is fit for them to live in. So I think first things first, we're probably going to want to replace some of these trees. It seems like they've really withered in our absence, and it's making the swamplands look very splotchy. I also wanted to see if maybe we could start evolving some different species. So we should probably get started on that first. I'm pretty sure there was still something from the bulrush that we needed. You have the swamp flower, and we actually need some toads nearby in order to do that. Ooh, and speaking of toads, there were a couple of these ficus trees over here that seemed to be big enough for the canopy tree. This one in particular, but sometimes those little hopping toads aren't close enough for us to evolve it, so we better press this right now while it's still available. Yeah, so with the canopy tree, that means we could start spreading our jungle a bit further too. And we might actually be able to start evolving the toucan today. Now, can we put the bulrush down here? I wonder if that would be a good way for us to work around it. I think the only reason why we haven't placed the toads over here was because they needed something special. Either bugs or flowers. So let's see what it says about the bulrush. Oh, it's unsuitable in the jungle biome. Alright, so that's definitely not going to work. It probably wouldn't last long enough over there for us to get any use out of it. So instead, let's see if we can figure out which one of these little hopping critters is our toads. That one's a frog. Are you our toad? There we go. So the toads require mushrooms and rocks? Oh, maybe it was the frogs that needed the flowers. Wait a second, then we could just plop some toads over here right away. We have so many mushrooms, we have so many stones. Yeah, let's just go ahead and set up a few right next to the water side. They'll probably appreciate being in the swamplands too. Plenty of mud for them to hop around in. So let's drop you right here, little toad. And hopefully you'll be able to survive there. Maybe we should even consider placing some more toads over by these rocks. Yeah, right over here next to our royal warthogs. They could use some new subjects to rule over. Looks like our first toad is doing just fine. Oh my gosh, and he's playing around? Playing in the mud just as I figured. We'll have to wait a little while for the population to actually grow though. Then we can start evolving our plants. So until then, let's go back to spreading the willow tree around a little bit more. Actually, let's go ahead and open this up to the swamp plants if we can. Let's see. We want things that are going to live happily inside the swamp. Those turnips, of course. The best meal for the rural warthogs. I wonder if maybe they could use a few more? Oh, we're actually missing their like species? Oh, no wonder it's so hard for them to find turnips right now. Hang on a second, what are we missing? Oh, the flowers, okay. Yeah, I knew there was some reason why we needed that swamp flower to be unlocked. I guess that was part of it. But let's go ahead and place a couple more of these turnips around here too. And hopefully that'll help fill you guys up. It's not as though I can really say that they're struggling right now. They are four warthogs strong. But it's certainly not as big as the other warthog groups, or the boar groups rather, that we have way over here in the hills. Now a couple more of the willow trees should help make this land seem a bit more fertile. Yeah, look at that, that purple stain is already growing, connecting those areas that had been separated before. 
We'll place a few more away over here. It seems like the willow trees are pretty much just like the bluebells that we have in the mountains. We can grow them in pretty much any barren landscape. The slimy trees I know were a little bit different, but it looks like they're pretty happy over here too. Why don't we go ahead and place one right next to the royal kingdom itself? These little patches of rocks, I guess could kind of be like their castle. So they'll have a nice big slimy tree growing right behind them, sheltering them from that hot sun perhaps, since the canopy is so sparse. Now, do we have enough toads over here yet? Oh, I do see one little baby toad. Still not enough, I'm afraid. We're going to need three. So we'll come back to you in just a moment. We'll give them a little bit of time to settle in, and we'll go back to the mountains to see how the guinea pigs are doing. Still going strong, little ones? Yeah, but it looks like you've had a baby too. Oh, and these beautiful blue tulips. Oh my gosh, what a perfect color. Blue tulips for the blueberry bushes and even the bluebells as well. Excellent, so I wonder if we could actually place one of the eagles in here now? Mother Sparrow will be very happy to see you again. Yeah, the suitable biome is all the way up to 100%, and I know that you're definitely going to be close enough to scoop one of these guinea pigs into the sky. So let's hope that you're going to have a better time living here than the eagle that came before you. I think we have to wait for the eagle to grow before they can actually go hunting. So this hunger bar going down so fast still has me a little bit concerned. If this eagle ends up dying first, and there's our canopy tree, excellent. Yeah, if this eagle ends up passing away, then I suppose we could always try to move them a little bit closer to our other animals. I wonder if maybe the eagles could actually steal a little bit of food from the wolves, too. We have learned that the wolves and the foxes actually share their catches. So basically, anything nearby that would eat this meat is allowed to do so. And oh my goodness, you guys have certainly caught quite the feast. We still have our guinea pigs, though, and we still have our sheep, too. As long as those two groups are still alive, then I think we should be okay. But yeah, our very first canopy tree is ready for us to place down too. It's looking very, very tiny right now, but I know this thing is going to be massive. So let's see what it says about the canopy tree so we know what we'll need to place it near. A very large jungle tree. Lots of branches on this tree for jungle-dwelling birds, such as the toucan to land on. This is one of the tallest trees in Equilinox, and it exclusively grows in higher altitude jungle areas. Uh, so maybe it is actually a good thing that we place the jungle so close to the mountains. It sounds like we're going to have to battle with the forest that we place behind it. Luckily, it's only like species as mushrooms, and we have mushrooms in abundance over here too. And we just need to make sure that it's above 20 meters. So is that a good place for you? No, that's a little bit too low. It's probably not enjoying it very much then. Basically, right on the cusp here is where it needs to be. So I guess these canopy trees are kind of going to be acting as a border between these two lands. As long as it can survive here, and as long as it doesn't get too upset over the presence of the tall trees. It looks like it's doing pretty good though. The environment isn't perfect, but it's definitely enough to keep it alive. Now, how many canopy trees do we need over here to start evolving those toucans? Probably far more than one. Yeah, we need two canopy trees. So we'll have to wait for this one to spread a couple of saplings around. And then we'll come on back here and take a look at the two cans next. Now is our eagle doing okay? Oh, wait a second. It looks like you're starving again. Did you not catch any food? It looks like the eagle is hunting though. Oh my goodness, a mighty swoop. But I think he may have missed. Oh, he's going in again. Oh! <gasps> Taking him right off of the ground? Oh my gosh, and then dropping him from the sky. What a way to go. Well, at least you managed to catch yourself a little bit of food before you ended up starving. That was very, very close. So now the eagle at least has a little bit of meat to return to, which I'm assuming means that he won't have to go hunting anytime soon. Though I suppose if we have some new little baby eagles running amok, Oh, you're building your nest on the ground. Oh, that makes sense. So we don't even have to worry about having these blueberry bushes nearby? 
Granted, I'm sure that the little guinea pigs are going to enjoy them too. Enlightening, you're still going strong? Oh, that means that the one that passed away must have actually been your baby. But it's good to see that lightning is still sticking around out here. You probably found all the best nooks and crannies to hide in. I hear the eagle screeching overhead too. That almost reminds me of shelter. I guess in a way that's kind of exactly what the guinea pigs are feeling right now. This is so cool though. So we have 10 out of 50 for the progress for this nest. That means by the time we come back here, I'm sure it's going to be completely built. Maybe we'll even see some little eagle eggs inside too. Mother Sparrow, you would be very, very proud of your baby. Let's see if she's still hanging around here. Yeah, there she is. Flying through the tall trees, searching for her son. And you can see him way off in the distance. He is living his best life now. So let's go back to our Swampland Kingdom. I'm sure the toad population has taken off by now. So we should be able to finally start evolving the bulrush into the swamp flower. And this is going to open up a lot of new avenues for us too. Our turnips are going to be so, so happy. Much happier than they are currently looking. And that means that you guys are going to have the biggest feast that you've ever seen pretty soon. We should probably consider planting some of these swampland flowers right next to their castle just to lighten the atmosphere a little bit. And while we're at it, we should probably see if there's anything else. Oh, another strange mutation? Yeah, anything else that we could plant up there too. Anything else that needs evolving. Oh, a nice bright green on this frog. I wonder if you took a little bit of inspiration from our rainbow lizards. It does seem to blend in quite well with the green that's on their scales. I wouldn't be surprised if the lizards are going to take you under their wing. Maybe you're even going to be our next medic. So what else can we evolve inside the Swamp Kingdom? Let's see. We'll bring up our swamp plants again. We have our swamp flower growing. We have the pagoda tree. The fly trapper. And the dead tree too. Ooh, the fly trap actually comes from the swamp flower itself. So pretty soon we'll be able to take a look at that. It looks like we're going to need some flies nearby. Oh, so have the flies been added to the game already? Oh, I didn't even notice this. Oh no, and it looks like the evolution progress has stopped. Well, I know it's not because of the toads, because there's still plenty of those. Is it the satisfaction? Maybe that dipped a little bit too low? We'll go ahead and start up the evolution again. It's almost done anyway, so we shouldn't have to wait too much longer. But yeah, if we're going to have to get the flies in here, that evolves from the butterfly, really? We need some mushrooms and some turnips to evolve the fly. So all of this can be done as soon as that flower is ready. And it should be ready in just a second? Yes, excellent. There's our swamp flower. An ugly, moldy flower. This disgusting, rare plant grows in the swamp biome. It dislikes the presence of mushrooms, so try to plant it in a fungi-free zone. Well, you're probably hating it here right now. Three mushrooms staring directly at you. It likes large rocks, but it hates mushrooms, really? Oh my goodness, where are we even going to put you then? You do realize that this is the Mushroom Kingdom. I guess that means it's going to be another strange little balancing act. Why don't we go ahead and pluck it out of the ground? Place it right next to the rocks for now. It's not going to be super happy, but it might be able to survive here. Now let's just make sure that nothing else around here needs mushrooms in order to survive. These just need the flowers. How about the willow trees? No, but looks like you guys are fine too. So what if we actually took these red mushrooms and just plucked them straight out of the ground? If we select remove many, we should be able to create a quick little area here, where all of the mushrooms are gone. That should have you feeling a little bit better, right? Well, not quite. Are there still some more mushrooms hiding? I guess maybe these are causing some concern? Is that good now? Nope, there must be some tiny little mushroom that I'm not seeing. Ah, uh, is it you back here? Yep, another red mushroom. Oh, another one in the shade. Oh my goodness, maybe if we just click in a big circle here, that will be enough to get rid of all of these spores. 
There we go, finally. I would imagine that some of these mushrooms are probably going to creep a little bit too close, but we'll just have to try to keep on top of that. Everything else looks like it's still doing okay too, so getting rid of the mushrooms didn't affect too much. But it is kind of a bummer that you guys can't have mushrooms around your castle. I guess you'll have to trust the toads to take care of them for you. Ooh, and speaking of which... Yeah, I think the toads were the only species that really needed the mushrooms to survive. They prefer mushrooms. So yeah, I guess the mushrooms will be taken care of by the toads entirely. We'll have a group of toads over here, and maybe a group of toads over on the side corner, so they can farm the mushrooms over here. Look at that, now you have your own special industry. It might not be quite as productive as the honey industry that the bears are running, but I'm sure they're going to do an excellent job anyway. Oh no, our poor little ducks. Furball the duck, Mr. Grumps the duck. It looks like they're being forced back into the water to find some food to eat. Oh, are the bears being particularly greedy about these hives? I wonder if there's a way for us to move the hive that we have up here. Like, can we actually just pluck this out of the ground? Transplant it and bring it straight over to our ducks. I'm not sure how much the bees are going to appreciate that. Oh, in fact, it looks like they're building another one. Oh, how interesting. So the bees are not going to move. They refuse to give up that prime real estate. I wonder if that means that nobody's going to take care of this hive anymore. That might be the only honey that we get from it, but at least that should allow our little ducks to survive. Oh no, are we down to just one? Mr. Grumps? Oh, there's Furball. That must be your big brother, swimming back after some long pilgrimage to find some food. Well, you guys don't have to worry about that so much anymore. Oh, wait a second. Oh no, I think the hive just, like, disappeared. Oh, I'm not sure if maybe one of the bears swiped it down. Don't want any competition now, do you? Or if it's just because it wasn't being maintained. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I know we placed some bees over here before, but they seem to appreciate the higher altitudes better. They basically just went wherever they wanted to go. So I'm afraid that even if we placed another group of bees down, they might not actually create a hive for us. Well, maybe we'll get lucky with that little baby bee. We'll come back in a little while and see where it decides to build its hive. Oh my gosh, look at all of these eagles. Oh, do I see a tiny little baby eagle in the nest? Oh, a little hatchling. There are so many eagles up here, though. We might actually want to consider placing down a few more groups of guinea pigs. A few more groups of something, because I can't imagine that these four guinea pigs are going to be enough for like five different eagles. It looks like we already have another one trying to do a little bit of hunting, too. There he goes, dropping it right on top of the nest, practically. Oh my gosh, delivery! Dinner has been served, little one. Alright, time to call in some reinforcements. We'll place another group of guinea pigs right here. And then maybe one more a little bit further down the cliffs. Right over here, where it should be the edge of the eagle's territory. I'm sure they can probably still reach the guinea pigs. But with three separate groups, there has to be enough food to go around even once all of these little baby eagles grow to full size. So with the swamp flowers growing, I believe next on our list is going to be the butterflies. Let's see if we can find them, and hopefully they'll be happy here. Yeah, I mean as happy as they can be in the swamps. Because they have the flowers nearby though, they should be able to survive here. So we'll place a little group right next to the castle. For the most part, I would imagine that flies are going to make much more sense over here, so I'm not going to flood this place with butterflies. As beautiful as it might be, I'm afraid it might be a little bit off-brand for the warthogs. There we go, there's our first little butterfly. Let's go ahead and pluck you out of the sky if we can, and we'll start evolving our flies right away. So with the flies on the way, all we're going to have left are the pagoda tree and the dead tree. So I guess the pagoda tree is next on the list. And that actually comes from the birch tree. We need to have some sunflowers nearby. 
so it sounds like that's probably not something exclusive to the swampland biome. Actually, where would be the best place for us to plant sunflowers? I didn't even know that we had sunflowers in the game. Oh, and they're super pretty too. They come from the poppies. We need some yellow large poppies to make them. Well, why don't we come over here then? We have plenty of poppies over by our sleepy meadows, right next to the honey industry. Oh, and really? You grew your other hive right next to the bears again? This is where you decided to build it? Oh, that is such a bummer. Our poor little ducks are never going to get any honey. Here's our first fly though, and how menacing does this guy look? A nasty little insect that enjoys life surrounded by mushrooms in murky swamp biomes. The flies live in fairly large swarms and can be eaten by frogs, toads, and even carnivorous plants. Excellent, so for the most part, I would imagine you'll like this. Yeah, you don't need anything to thrive. That does not surprise me one bit. So even though it seems to like mushrooms, it's not one of its like species. I guess we'll just place you over here then? Give you a good fighting chance against those toads? Oh, but hang on a second. We actually needed the flies near the swamp flowers, didn't we? We have to increase the size of these anyways, so why don't we go ahead and do that first? Oh my gosh, and I just realized... Over one million points again. I think that's cause for celebration. Let's go way over here to our bluebell pack and see if we can make their fur a little bit more fitting to their name. We could actually go all the way, completely light blue. But I think we're going to lower the price a little bit. That's a little bit out of my budget right now because we still have to have points to evolve things. So next time we see the bluebell pack, I would imagine their pups are going to be looking very, very different. Oh, and we should check out the colors of the eagles as well. I didn't check to see if there was anything we could change here. Yes, excellent. We can change the colors of the eagles. Oh, and they have some interesting colors. Black, white, dark orange, ruby red, even dark purple. I suppose it would fit too since they are surrounded by bluebells of all sorts. Maybe that could even connect them to the wolf pack in the mountains two of the toughest predators as far as the guinea pigs are concerned. It is definitely a harsh life up in those mountains. Oh, and I almost forgot about our canopy trees. It looks like we do have quite a few growing on the border here. So I'll bet we could actually start evolving our toucan as well. If we grab one of our sparrows out of the sky, there's not enough canopy trees. Do you think maybe this sparrow lives somewhere else? Like, maybe we have to use one of the sparrows who live right here inside this nest. I guess that's something for us to try in the next episode. And the Swamp Kingdom is looking much, much better too. By the time we join our warthogs again, we should be ready to start growing our carnivorous plants. And hopefully they'll be able to help us fend off that giant swarm of bugs that I see in the background. Oh my gosh. It almost looks like their swampland is under attack now, like the royal castle is under siege. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!